Yeah, I'm Brian, Sarah's dad. And I like Dawn saying this particular uh, moment. Um, it's, it is a real privilege to be speaking first uh, on this Sarah and Andy's wedding show. The last time I had such an attentive audience, and everybody looking at me, was when I stood up and sheepishly said, Guilty, Your Honour! <laughs> <laughs> I hope you've enjoyed the food. Well, what are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was, I did have aim that across the desk. It was a bone wrap on speeding. <laughs> in my view. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed the food and the unique barn setting as much as I have so far. There, there is a bit more to come. Uh, on behalf of Ellie, Kevin, Jeanette, Sue and Warren, um, I wish to extend a warm and sincere welcome to you all. Uh, although we on this table, and it came out this morning through the vicar, although we on this table have been instrumental in the development of both Sarah and Andy, or Andrew, shall I say? <laughs> <laughs> From babies to adults, it's fair to say that everyone here has played some part in, in making them the wonderful newly married couple that, that they are. And again, something that the vicar said, through attending you and sitting down with us, you are... Uh, I can find it. Uh, you, you helped to turn the day into their very special day. I know that many of you have travelled significant distances no doubt with related challenges along the way, just to be sat here. I extend a big thank you for making the effort, and therefore a very special day. I'd also like to thank the many of you present, and others I don't think are quite present yet, who played a part in assisting with a myriad of preparations. There are too many people and too many tasks to itemise now, so I won't do it. It really is appreciated and without such assistance, the day wouldn't have gone as well as it has done, and I'm sure will continue through to the close tonight. I'm certain, absolutely certain, because I've already had various voice comments, everyone agrees with me that Sarah looks positively stunning. Yeah. Yeah. I have to admit to a tear of pride welling up when I saw her this morning in full regalia for the first time. I would probably have loved a bit, but I focused on the mantra, and you can join in, a bit of audience participation here, I'm sure you know it, but change the I to a your, so here we go, everybody together. I'm not losing a daughter, I'm gaining a son. For you. Thank you. <laughs> the, uh, I'll be able to get through to the end now, I think, without support, uh, without putting it myself. Although, uh, all of you probably know that over the recent months, Sarah and Andrew have lived troubled existences. And I'm not referring to the hen and stag party. <laughs> No, indeed, my weight loss under Sarah's strict, very strict regime. I am, of course, referring to the extended hip operation recovery period um, and the need to live apart from each other through the week, only coming together in weekends. As one of the locations they used was mine, this was a, 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 providing a real opportunity for me to witness firsthand their love for each other. Also, their ability to work together to resolve life-changing issues, which was really very evident. For example, what tie or socks Andrew should wear. That <laughs> I should immediately say that, that there were, in our better examples, like emigrating um, and changing jobs. As a result, I therefore have every confidence that the recent experiences in overcoming adversity and challenges will stand them in good stead for future happiness and progression through life together, starting with new jobs in Abu Dhabi in only a few days' time. As I move towards the toast, I can truthfully say that I've got to know Andrew very well over this recent period and regard him as a fully paid up member of the family. <laughs> as an example of this, uh, I like examples. <laughs> <laughs> it's <worse> than that. <laughs> I can report that there has been a reciprocity of minds along the way. I now use a pestle and mortar for food preparation. <laughs> <laughs> and he now knows how to bleed a radiator. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I 
coming towards the end, and finally on a slightly somber note, as uh, we make the toast, I'd like you all to think about those who can't share the day with us, especially those no longer with us. <laughs> You're not allowed to do that. <laughs> Uh, I know they are carrying mementos of uh, relatives that are no longer with us and uh, in respect of them. So, without further ado, I'll move on. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, please be upstanding. Please join me in raising your glass to uh, the bride and groom, Sarah and Andy. <laughs> and I'll hand over to Andrew. We need to follow that, but thank you for your kind words, Brian, and for being so brave and going first as well. Okay. Um, um, <laughs> On behalf of Mrs. Stas and I. Um, to thank you for sharing this special day with us. Um, it really wouldn't have been the same without you, and I know a lot of you have travelled here. Um, it really wouldn't be the same without all of you here, although it would have been probably considerably cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> I feel very honoured to stand here today in front of you all, our very close family and friends. Um, it's probably the only time that I'll be able to talk on behalf of my wife and I um, for the rest of the time. <laughs> Um, thank you for giving me the chance. Um, firstly, to go on from what um, Brian said, um, I know it's not possible for everyone to be here today um, through different circumstances, but especially those who can't be with us. Um, and they're most certainly here in our thoughts and our hearts. So um, if I can get you all to stand. Um, first, a few times. Um, to absent friend and family. Um, Jeanette and Brian, um, I congratulate for you for producing such a beautiful daughter. <laughs> and thank you for such a warm welcome into your family. It really does mean a lot to me. Um, I really hope I live up to the expectations and I can promise to love and protect Sarah. Did you bump into No. <laughs> Still 60 on you, still beat me at Babington. <laughs> Shocking behaviour. Um, to my mum, my dad and Ellie, um, I'd like to say that, um, well, I can't thank you enough for what you've done for me. Um, Um, you supported me through so much, and I can't thank you enough for the sight you've given me and obviously now Sarah um, in our lives. And you know, thank you very, very much for that. Um, so I'll let you sit down, but just as a toast to the parents. To the parents. Yeah. 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 To the parents. <laughs> I'd like to thank my ushers. Um, David first for his unwavering support and love um, throughout a lot of tough times, and um, for Bobby for waking up in the morning. To Sarah's entourage, um, Steph, Laura, and Jenny, um, you all look absolutely amazing. Um, even Steph, which is <laughs> it's a real turn up. So. <laughs> Um, for everything you've done up to including today, guys, I can't thank you enough. You know, you have done so much, and it's a really short space of time. I get, you know, it's three months is not a long time to um, plan a wedding, which I know. Um, so thank you for everything you've done. For, I really, really, really appreciate it. So um, to the ushers and the bridesmaids. Cheers. 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 Right, breathing a deep breath here because I will need to take one. So. Sarah, Mrs. Stas again, <laughs> my stunning, my stunning wife. Um. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> <Read>. <laughs> 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 
Four different dress ups and uh, yeah, scared, scared the hell out of me. Um, every day it's felt like a mini adventure, and I can't think of someone that I would have preferred to spend it with. So, thank you for making me the happiest man today. As you all know, Sarah and I are soon to move to Abu Dhabi. Um, one of the, well, our next little adventure that we're doing. Um, <laughs> Um, so, as I said to Sarah this morning, for yesterday's memories, today's love, and tomorrow's dreams. <laughs> you are as bad as me. My asking all the amazing is the most important toast of the night to Sarah. Sarah! Sarah. And Andrew. <laughs> And now you've seen me cry my eyes out. <laughs> and now it's Matt's turn. You can, now to... <laughs> you can now listen to the most fictional bit of writing you've ever heard. <laughs> and Matt is, you know, he's, as well as being full of a load of crap, he, <laughs> he's one of the best mates that you could ever have. And, um, and I thank you, Matt, as well, for everything you've done today. So thank you. Thank you. It's the last time for five minutes that you're not going to be interrupted by Sarah. <laughs> good, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, for those of you that haven't had the pleasure of meeting me before, <laughs> my name's Matt. I'm obviously a nervous wreck at the minute. <laughs> um, it's been a great pleasure to be Andrew's man, uh, best man for today. Uh, it's such a great honour, a sign of our friendship, and it's a great deal to be an half man. So, thank you. I'd like to begin by obviously some thank yous to Andrew, uh, sorry, thanking Andrew on the behalf of the bridesmaids for his kind words of having them play a special part in today. Seth, Jenny and Laura, I have to all say you look absolutely beautiful and done an excellent job. So a round of applause. Everybody. Yeah. Indeed, as Brian alluded to, they are only outshone by Sarah herself, who looks absolutely stunning. Um, and I'd also like to personally thank Bobby and David for today, the ushers. So, round of applause, everybody. I could have done without my right hand men, so uh, <laughs> thank you guys. So, a little bit about me and Andrew. 18 years ago, our bromance began. Uh, Andrew joined Pound Hill First School, and I'm not too sure how we first connected as friends. But <laughs> it, was quite, it was quite, to be fair, it was quite the opposite of me. Quiet, well spoken, and he seemed intelligent, would you believe? <laughs> as our friendship grew, he came out of his shell and often had the tendency to get wound up easily, acting like a little bit of a girl at times. <laughs> this led to his nickname of Andrewella Emma Stratt. <laughs> And it stuck for a few years, let's be honest. It's still stuck. Yeah, it's still there. Like I said, he seemed to be pretty intelligent at school. I've since been letting on a, on a story, though, that makes absolute nonsense of this. Whereby, one day, he came home from school to boast how good his spelling was. Oh. Only for Kevin to read the front cover of his book with the words, Andrew Stas, Spieling Book. <laughs> Not said on that one. <laughs> it's true. It is. It is. Continuing on the subject of our school days, Andrew was quite the teacher's pet. Not only were they fond of him, but he was fond of a select few as well. <laughs> In particular, a certain Miss Cushing. <laughs> and I can definitely think of two reasons why he would have taken a shot. <laughs> 
<laughs> One day, David, Kevin and Andrew were sitting around the dinner table when David announced in the sun that it was National Cleavage Day. <laughs> Andrew, being the inquisitive lad, asked Kevin what, was cleavage, what, what cleavage was. And so obviously he had to explain. Andrew's response though was, wow, Miss Cushing's got a really nice one of those. <laughs> Excusing the hair, which hasn't changed a lot over the years from being a bit of a mop, Andrew has always taken pretty good pride in his appearance. The odd manicure, the odd pedicure, but you know, he would struggle to find any item of clothing in his wardrobe that wasn't non-branded. And it's fair to say that when these two decide to start a family, I've got first bets hedged on the, on the names of the child being either Jack or Will. <laughs> Well, as the school chapter of our lives came to a close and the new adventure of, Ju of uni drew closer, Andrew, Steve, Liam and I went on our first lads' holiday to Magaloo. Oh, God. <laughs> looking, looking back, we were the perfect example of the in-between. A, a nightmare in our own way, all of us. Most notably, Steve for chasing every piece of skirt around us, <laughs> no matter what they look like or how we <laughs> treat <laughs> Andrew, however, was a bit of a mixed bag. He started the holiday by going a bit hard. By the end of the week, he, he, was, he couldn't hack the pace at all. <laughs> Down the years, he's been a bit of a sick note, some of you might know, for one reason or another. <laughs> but to self-diagnose uh, self tonsillitis while on holiday with the lads was just typical Andrew. <laughs> and he'll always be known as sick note stuff. <laughs> Thank you. And so off to uni. Where off to, so off to uni we went, where Andrew met a lot of you here today, and of course Sarah. On my first visit down to Portsmouth, I was obviously introduced to Sarah, and my first impressions was, well, he's done alright for himself. <laughs> she seemed very outgoing and fun, but my god, what a laugh she had. <laughs> 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 Throughout our friendship, there have been some real highs. Andrew and I have not only played for the same local football team for a long time, but we also share the same love for Chelsea. It's quite hard to believe we've had our season tickets for 10 years now, and during this time we've been lucky enough to, to see us win a boatload of trophies. Quite a contrast to those goonies up the road. <laughs> <laughs> we also witnessed some of the great European nights such as Barcelona and Bayern Munich, but I think the one that sticks in the memory is a trip to Cardiff for the Carling Cup final. We were pretty smashed on a bottle of Jack Downs before we'd even arrived in Wales. It was a great day. And you can't stay away for long too, too long, mate, so don't think Kev's going to be able to put up and sit next to me in my potty mouth. <laughs> <laughs> As I said, Andrew and I used to spend a lot of time running around one another's houses, after school and at weekends. This was usually spent playing pro evo and the odd bit of table tennis and football. You could say he was a brother that I never had. Oh. And I know my mum and dad would say he was the second son they'd never had either. He was around there that often. <laughs> Andrew must have thought the same. So much so, on a particular game, that, uh, a Chelsea game, he was so drunk that he decided to give my mum a call and pronounce his undying love for her. <laughs> <laughs> I was there! I was there! Oh, I love, love you, you in there. there. <laughs> he has always been a bit of a suck up to the mum as well. <laughs> <laughs> On hearing the news that Andrew and Sarah were getting married, obviously I was so happy for them both. My mind did immediately turn, though, to organising the stags and ensuring Andrew had a good, uh, good send-off or two. <laughs> Within minutes of the phone being put down, telling me they're great news, Sarah texted me with five clear rules. <laughs> 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 I'll admit it now, Sarah, with haste, the, de the text was deleted and I cracked on with the organisation. <laughs> The destination of choice was Amsterdam. For those who haven't been there, it's a place full of plenty of culture, but it's in its own unique way. <laughs> There's a great group of us, and I'd just like to take the time now to say thank you to all, all the stags that came to Amsterdam and to London. So, I know that Andrew was really made up that you all made it there, and I know you all enjoyed yourselves as well. For one reason or another. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Whilst in Amsterdam, the groom struggled with the pace which was being set, it had been set and spent a good part of the first afternoon in the hotel asleep. <laughs> Some of this was spent out on the tiles and the reception floor. <laughs> the, fir the first day definitely set the tone for the rest of the weekend though. Andrew being Andrew was a bit of a wet lettuce and refused to carry out a number of the challenges he was set. <laughs> He did get his comeuppance eventually though, and I have to say this will be one event that will live long in the memory. I can only imagine what an onlooker's view would have been as ten stags manhandled and ultimately chucked a man dressed in a red PVC suit into the canal. <laughs> <laughs> My dad, as he pleaded away like a girl. <laughs> I've been sworn to secrecy on the rest, so I won't be down to <laughs> So, moving into married life, Andrew, I'd like to end with some advice on what people thought were the right ingredients to a long and happy marriage. So here are a few. Firstly, set the ground rules and establish who's boss. Just do it at all, basically. <laughs> Secondly, never be afraid that Sarah will leave you. She spent a long time training you now, and she's not going to throw that away like that. <laughs> Thirdly, never forget those three little words every day for the rest of your life. You're right, dear. <laughs> joking aside, I want to oh, say again. <laughs> I want to say what a privilege. Priv uh, get the words out. What a privilege is it is today to be your best man. I couldn't have wished for a better friend, and I'm glad to see. You. I'm, yeah, I'm thrilled to see you marry Sarah, your beautiful bride. I'm over the moon for you both. Andrew for finding Sarah, and Sarah for putting up with Andrew. <laughs> I wish them all, both all the happiness in the world, in their lives together, and especially so as they embark on the next big adventure in Abu Dhabi. All that remains me for do, uh, for, to do now is to ask you all to stand once more and raise your glasses and wish you uh, new Mr. and Mrs. Stats a long, prosperous, happy, and healthy life together. Ladies and gentlemen, to the happy couple, Andrew and Sarah. <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.